This episode is going to be a special one, but more so for me than for you. Albert Einstein is probably my favorite person in history. I mean, if you were to ask me the famous question, who would I want to have dinner with dead or alive, I would probably say Einstein. But this hasn't always been the case. It all got started because of a book. A few months ago, I read this book called Einstein, His Life and Universe, and I was hooked. That book talks everything about Einstein. It's a complete biography. All the information is in there, with the only limitations being, of course, the historical records that we do have of Einstein. But that's good for us, at least from a historical standpoint, because Einstein was alive not too long ago, which means that we have a lot of records as to what he did and how he lived his life. So, welcome to Vlogs and Knowledge. <laughs> Let me first start by saying that this is not going to be a biography about Einstein. I'm just not going to talk about everything that Einstein did. The whole concept of my show is to bring you guys a subject in a fun and engaging way. And then if you want afterwards, you can go out and research more information on your own. In fact, I strongly encourage it. And then you can come back here, leave a comment and maybe start a discussion because I really want this to be a two-way thing and not just with me, but also with the other members of our community. So Einstein, who was he? Well, he was a Jewish physicist that was born and lived most of his life in Germany, having been credited to revolutionize modern physics. Now, if that's not good enough, he did it twice. Once in 1905 with the special theory of relativity and once in 1915, just a decade later, with his general theory of relativity. The second one is a generalization and an expansion upon the first. In the early 1900s, Einstein had just graduated school and managed to get a job as a patent clerk in a patent examinations office. All he would do all day is sit there and examine different patent applications that were coming in every single day. And this was very good for Einstein for two reasons. The first one being that he was exposed to different patent applications every single day. And a lot of these applications were things related to physics, things that he could use to get inspiration from. This was also good for him because he managed to find a lot of downtime to think about his own projects and experiments. And Einstein was a big thinker. He would always think in pictures or in thought experiments. At the age of 16 years old, he was already thinking what it would be like to travel alongside a beam of light. Now, I don't know about you, but I was not thinking those things at 16 years old. I was most likely thinking, what game can I play today? Einstein was also a rebel at heart, and to understand why that's important, we have to look at how modern physics was at the time. Modern physics was based on this whole concept of an absolute truth, that things were what they were, they were absolute. And to just give you an example so that you can understand what I mean by an absolute truth, let's take a car for example. A car is a car if it's underwater or on earth or in space. I mean, it still remains a car no matter where it is. That's called an absolute truth. But Einstein, he didn't like that. He didn't like the concept of an absolute truth. In fact, both of his big theories are based on the opposite. They're saying that things are not absolute, but that they are relative. And more specifically, that time is relative. Now that we have the background out of the way, let's go back to Einstein and his theories. 1905 for Einstein was arguably his biggest year. That's really where he laid the foundations of his physics career. That year, he wrote four papers, and two of those papers were to revolutionize modern physics. The first one was his paper on special relativity, and the second one was arguably what we know Einstein most for, E equals MC squared, which was to become the basis of the atomic bomb. But more on that later. Following the huge success of his first paper, Einstein realized that it was incomplete, it was missing something. It was only talking about time, speed, and light, it was missing gravity, and gravity has an impact on light and also an impact on time. Einstein came to the conclusion that gravity could bend a light ray, and let me just illustrate this with a simple example. Take Earth for example, Earth has a strong gravitational pull, that's why the moon orbits around the Earth. Now if there was for example an asteroid that were to come in close to the Earth, its path would be deviated from the gravity from Earth, a light ray would behave in the same way. After years of trial and error, constantly going back to his equations, making revisions, making new predictions, in 1915 he succeeded on his quest and created the general theory of relativity but he wasn't the only one working on it. There was another physicist that was racing Einstein for the theory, and Einstein won by literally only a few days. So just think about that, a few days difference and history could have been totally different. What if Einstein suddenly had gotten sick and had to be in bed for two weeks? I mean, there was no way he would have been able to produce the theory if he was in bed vomiting for two weeks. Or would he? Because Einstein was extremely sick during that period, and he still managed to beat the other physicists. So Einstein deserves all of the credit. His theories were great and revolutionary, there's no doubt about that, but not everybody accepted them. Simply for the fact that they were based on thought experiments, on things that were not tangible, things that you couldn't really see. While I'm not going to go too deeply into his theories, let me just give you an example to illustrate my point. According to one of his theories, a stick of wood could become longer or shorter depending on the speed that it was going at. Now if you were to tell me that in the 20th century, I would probably think that you were crazy. And in fact, most people did because how can a stick become longer or shorter? It just doesn't make any sense. All that was missing for Einstein was some sort of proof. Somebody had to do something that would prove Einstein right that his theories were correct. 
Luckily for Einstein, in 1919, there was a man by the name of Sir Arthur Eddington that led an expedition to the west coast of Africa, specifically to prove one of Einstein's theories. So here's what they did. They wanted to find out exactly how much light would bend when passing close to a gravitational field. And the best way you could really do this is to look at the stars. The stars are far enough that if you put an object between you and the stars, you can take some pictures, make some measurements, and eventually get to a number. Their best option was to use the sun, but the only problem is that when the sun is out, you don't really see any stars. So they had to wait for a total eclipse, that way the sun can be out, and then there's the moon that blocks the light of the sun, thus revealing the stars. If the measurements and the observations were to confirm what Einstein was saying, well, Einstein were to become an international hero. And can you guess what happened? Well, of course, the observations were correct. They were exactly what Einstein had said, and Einstein became an international sensation. Or so that's what everybody thinks, but the actual measurements were a little bit off, a few decimal points off to be exact. But it was close enough that they said, you know what, it's close enough, Einstein was right, let's just go with that and be done with it. But to Einstein's credit, later developments in physics and technology eventually proved them right. So Einstein was ahead of his time. After that, Einstein became an international celebrity and was offered many positions at various prestigious universities. In 1921, he was also offered the Nobel Prize, but not for any one of his two big theories, instead for something called the photoelectric effect. The people of the Nobel Prize Committee were not such big fans of Einstein. They weren't agreeing with his theories, even though they had been proven, once again because they were mostly based on thought experiments. But by then, Einstein had become such a big international celebrity that it was starting to look bad on them that they weren't giving him a Nobel Prize. In the end, they kind of had no choice to save the reputation than to give Einstein what was rightfully his, but they still chose not to give it for any one of his big theories, instead they gave it for the photoelectric effect. I mean it's not optimal, but still Einstein got his price. After that, Einstein was relatively quiet, he didn't really do that much. In 1933, he left Germany because Hitler was coming into power and was threatening the lives of many Jews. He left for the United States, but he wasn't the only one. A lot of Jewish physicists left Germany and all went to the United States, which perhaps is why the United States were the first ones to create the atomic bomb and not the Germans. And what's an episode about Einstein without talking about the atomic bomb? But contrary to what people might think, Einstein had very little to do with the atomic bomb. It is true that the atomic bomb is based on Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. It's a beautiful equation. It looks simple, but it's very beautiful. The equation, E equals mc squared, simply means that energy is equal to mass times c squared, c being the speed of light, 300,000 meters per second. Now in the atomic bomb, what you have is you have one atom that is being split into two. That atom has a mass, even though the mass is very, very small because it's an atom, it still has a mass. And that mass is then being multiplied by C squared, which is a very big number. So of course it's gonna give off a lot of energy. And I think we all know what happened when the US dropped the atomic bombs. Oh, and just a little fun fact, sometime in the early 1920s, Einstein received a letter from a young physicist saying that his equation, E equals mc squared, could potentially be used to create something like an atomic bomb. But Einstein, he dismissed the idea, he said that something like this could not be possible. History can be ironic sometimes. Einstein had two wives, one divorce, and countless mistresses in between. He also had three children, one of which ended up in a mental institute and died shortly after. Another one was given up for adoption at a very young age and we literally have no idea where she is. And the other one lived a normal life, had kids and grandkids, some that are still alive today. Einstein eventually died on April 18th, 1955 from heart failure. And there goes one of history's best men. I'm really glad that I made this episode a little bit longer than usual because it allowed me to really cover Einstein the way I wanted to cover it. Now I know I mentioned this wasn't a biography and this certainly was not a biography. I haven't talked about everything about Einstein. In fact, you should go out and research Einstein on your own because Einstein had a very hectic personal life. Something that I completely did not cover in this episode, but trust me, it's very interesting. If you've made it till the end, well thank you, you guys are the ones that I make these videos for. And I want to try my best to give back as much as possible to you guys so that you guys feel appreciated because I really do appreciate you. So we're going to continue with the fan of the week segment that I started last week. If you don't know what that is, every single week at the end of the video, I feature one of you guys' comments as a fan of the week. All that you have to do to enter is leave a comment on last week's video, something interesting, start a discussion, and I'm going to personally pick out one comment to feature in next week. So if you want to be featured in next week's video, make sure to leave a comment right here. With that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. It's been an absolute pleasure and trust me, it really has been a pleasure and I will see you all next Wednesday.